So a good source to find free materials is if you simply pop down to your local factory. And if you ask the owners nicely, I'm sure they'll be able to give them for free, just like they have with me. Welcome to the one weekend I get free to build a workshop is the weekend that it rains. So I've cleared the site. What I'm gonna do is build it so it's facing this way. Because what I've found is on this concrete pad, uh, I've got these other slabs at the front. So I'm gonna build it up here, facing that way. And then what I'm gonna do is have a big shutter door that flips out and equals to a lean-to space. So I should be able to wheel forges and equipment outside forge away here and then it all closes up back inside this space. That's the plan. So one thing to think about is of course the rising dam. If I build this wooden structure straight to this uh, concrete pad, uh, the rain is going to bounce back up and start you know, causing dampness and eventually rotting of the wood. So what you would normally do is build like a layer of bricks all the way around uh, with a bit of damp course and that would stop that from happening. But instead all I'm going to do is dig a trench channel all the way around and fill that channel with some sort of hard core or whatever I can get hold of and that will allow all the water to kind of drain away out and around the pad and hopefully absorb the rain better. And that, that, will, that will do me as a temporary shelter. That, that will be fine. And it will, last, it will last for years. Great things come from small beginnings, eh? Okay, so I've dug the trench. I did think about maybe uh, like pouring concrete and building up a higher wall. So then that really does give me like a perimeter, but like I so I'm gonna do this as cheap as chips. So I'm just doing, making the best with what I've got. Now I'm going to grab my pallets and I'm going to start piling them up here, ready to take apart. So stacked up on the plinth now is all the pallets that I've collected so far. And I'm going to sort them out size by size, so all the thick stuff I'll have in one pile, all the thin stuff I'll have in another pile. Obviously not all of it is going to be great quality, so I'll be able to sift through it all and pick apart what I want, what's going to go in the burner after. What I reckon though is I'll need at least another two loads of this of this amount because once I've pulled it all apart I think you'll, you'll be amazed to see how how much material is together because all of these bits are going to be overlapping for the cladding and I've got an idea of how I'm going to use the thicker stuff to use as the main build of the frame so keep watching I'll um, I'll show you how I'm going to do that So I've taken apart the, the first pallet. This is the amount of wood, and this is kind of the arrangement of how I'm going to clad the, uh, the sides of the shed, as you can see. So because they're quite narrow, I'd have to use quite a lot, and you want to overlap at least halfway. And so that's how much one pallet will, will cover. So that's quite, that's quite a bit of space. Yeah, relatively. I mean, depends on what pallets you're using. And obviously they're all different sizes and you want to get them all matching. So what I'm going to have to do is spend more time finding pallets that are the same width so it all looks nice, like a proper shirt. I think 
it'll be good to put screws to go through three pieces at a time. So there's no, well it's a good amount of insulation, that thickness, and it will stop the rain from coming in. So when the rain hits, it's going to drip off, it's never going to go back up, it's always going to be dripping off. So this is how I'm planning on making the supporting beams. You can see they're all overlapping uh, on the quarters, so there's only ever one join and two strong pieces on every part, if you see what I mean. So these can, it's a bit like how you would build a Lego house in a way, how they're put on top of each other. And what I'll do is I'll screw them together with a layer of glue in between, so then the whole thing becomes a solid uh, plank, if you like. Uh, and then I would use that then to build the frame and then use the rest to clad. Hopefully that'll work out all right. Now I really apologise that this is going to take me a little while. I'm going to try and get as much time as I can. So I've changed things around at work and this is how it looks like for me now. This is how I'm able to try and afford the upkeep of the family, my home, and to be able to get this thing going. And I've started an evening shifts. So I work now from two o'clock in the evening till midnight. And that gives me the morning where I'm most fresh, like today, to get stuff done. But I've possibly just started uh, other work with another engineer. And that's some really, really good, interesting stuff. Which means I'm now gonna be working from nine in the morning till midnight which is pretty hard graft. Half day on a Friday and I get the weekend to spend with my family and then at some point it comes down to the workshop. But me and my wife, we've been discussing things and we are tempted to do something quite radical and that is to give up this house altogether and live even more simply and maybe invest in something like a tiny house if you're familiar with the tiny house movement. Because if I can work less and have more time, that's the dream, isn't it? It's to have the time to do these things without being on the treadmill to constantly earn money, to give money to other people, to pay bills. But this could be my way out of doing that. This could be the thing for the future, which I think it could possibly be your dream as well, where, where you're your own boss and you can generate enough income but have the time to do the things that you need to do. But take care, guys, and happy forging a life worth living. See you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>